Hello, I'm JW, and in this video, circuit breakers. Uh, here's an example of a Crabtree one, but uh, they're all uh, pretty much the same. And uh, these devices are there for two reasons. They're to disconnect the supply in the event of an overload or in the event of a short circuit. Now, I've chosen these particular Crabtree ones to look at because uh, these came out of a consumer unit which uh, suffered some water damage and actually leaked in from above. And uh, I've actually got four of these, two of which stopped working, obviously due to the water leaking in, and the other two did not. So it might be interesting to see the differences inside and what has actually failed. And uh, this isn't a particular problem with these uh, circuit breakers themselves. It's just the fact that uh, they're not designed, of course, to have water leaking into them. The uh, ones in question, of course, have been replaced. The uh, leak was uh, repaired and, of course, new circuit breakers were installed. So. Uh, I've already taken the opportunity to drill out some of the rivets on these, so we should be able to open them up and have a look inside. Now, these are fairly ordinary uh, circuit breakers, so these are uh, Crabtree uh, branded, but uh, again, they're all going to be pretty much the same design. And uh, these ones have the uh, plug-in arrangement on the back. Uh, most of the others actually have a uh, screw terminal at the bottom at these to just have that sort of pre-made piece which plugs into the corresponding part in the consumer unit. And uh, They've got the usual terminal on the top there for the wires going to the circuit. And uh, these are just single pole devices. The uh, power will be connected in at the bottom. So you'll normally fire a screw there, or in the uh, case of this one, the tab on the back, through the mechanism inside. And then your outgoing circuit will be connected at the top here. And this particular one is a 6 amp device. So typically that would be used for a lighting circuit. And there's another 6 amp one here. Uh, this 40 amp one was actually uh, for a cooker circuit, and then there's another 6 amp one over there, which again was for another lighting circuit. Now, uh, these things, of course, have a uh, switch inside. These are all on the on position, and also in the off position, it uh, just disconnects the uh, two terminals so that the uh, circuit is no longer connected to the power. Now, as I said earlier, these ones actually came out of an installation which had suffered some water damage. The uh, consumer unit was located high up on a ceiling and the room above, in the floor above, was actually a bathroom and there was a leak there of water and uh, water leaked down into the uh, consumer unit. And uh, as you can possibly see on the top here, there's uh, quite a bit of corrosion in the top of some of these. And uh, the fault was only noticed when the uh, circuit stopped working. And of course then the uh, water leak was repaired and obviously the circuit breakers were replaced with new ones. So some of these do not actually work and some of them do. And of course they're all replaced, uh, obviously, because uh, they've all been uh, subjected to the water going in there. Now, uh, I have already uh, drilled out some of the rivets here. These are hold with four rivets on the side here. And they just go through to the back. Now, this is another one of these devices which isn't really supposed to be opened. Well, certainly not designed for it, but nevertheless uh, we're going to have a go inside anyway. So hopefully we can just press these rivets through. And, uh, and hopefully we can open the... Uh, device and see what's inside. Okay. So here inside, and say this other half is just a uh, plastic moulding, so all the uh, actual mechanism is in this half. And uh, so just remove that piece and uh, just turn this so then we can have a closer look at that. Right, here's inside the device and the incoming uh, connection is at the bottom here. Uh, this particular one has a sort of plug-in tab there which comes via the metal pieces here. Most types actually have a hole in the bottom here where a prong or wire would go in and then there's a screw terminal kind of arrangement here. But uh, in any case, the power comes in at the bottom. And the uh, contact is actually here, shown in the open position here. And it's between here and this movable piece here. So if I just move the uh, switch there, you can see that will now close. So that's the actual uh, switching part of the device. So uh, assuming it's in the closed position, we'll come across to the uh, hooked piece there. And it's actually connected to this piece of braid on the back there, which is not uh, terribly easy to see. But uh, that comes across onto the braid there. And then you've got a, a thinner wire there, which forms part of this coil around this uh, movable piece in the middle here. And this is basically a solenoid so that uh, when that's magnetised this pin will move forward. And of course it continues via all the wire there and it comes out at the top here on another sort of braided uh, connection piece there. Let's put that uh, back in. And the uh, braid actually connects to this movable piece of metal here. And this is a bimetallic strip of the type uh, also used in thermostats. 
and come, continues via this uh, strip here and then comes back via the terminal and of course out to the circuit wiring that you have. And the screw here is just used to uh, tighten up and pull onto the wire so it's secured in position. Now these things have got two tripping mechanisms and the first one of which is this coil here. And essentially when the device is in the on position, I'll just place it there, of course current is flowing through this all the time and in the event of a short circuit the current that flows here will be extremely large, typically in the order of a few hundred or even several thousand amps, depending on the characteristics of the supply. This will create a magnetic field here, and it will move the pin there, and in this case it will push upwards, and on pushing upwards onto this piece here, it will cause the device to trip, and of course open the contacts at the other side there. So let's try and show that again. So contact closed, and when this is pulled up, springs open and of course opens the contacts disconnecting the supply. Now the other tripping part here is this strip and uh, this is a bimetallic strip as similar to the type also used in uh, thermostats and uh, as the current passes through here it will cause the strip to heat up and because it's made of two dissimilar metals uh, one side of it will expand at a different rate to the other. This will cause the strip to bend and as it bends of course it will pull on this little lever here and if it heats up enough, and of course bends far enough, then uh, it will cause the device to trip and switch off. And of course this is selected uh, as depending on the rating of the device, so that uh, if the current exceeds a predefined level, then of course that will disconnect the device. And this is the part which would typically uh, react to uh, smaller types of overload. So if, say for example on the uh, 6 amp circuit break we have here, if say 10 amps was passed through it, and of course that would slowly heat up and cause the device to trip. Unlike the magnetic part, uh, this is going to take some time to actually react, simply for the fact that it has to actually heat and of course bend away. So that could be many seconds or in some cases even a couple of minutes before it actually heated enough to trip the device. Whereas of course the magnetic part uh, is going to be pretty much an instant thing, as, uh, as soon as that magnetic uh, field reaches a predefined level, then of course it will trip the device pretty much straight away. Now this may be a bit difficult to see, but this is the uh, 6 amp uh, circuit breaker here, and this is the uh, same component from the 40 amp variety. And as you can see, the strip is uh, somewhat thicker, hence would uh, obviously heat up more slowly before actually tripping. And of course that's exactly what you would expect. And in regards to the magnetic part, again, this is the 6 amp one here, and if you look at the uh, 40 amp one adjacent, so the main differences are that there's uh, far fewer turns on this one, and the wire, of course, is much larger to handle the obviously larger current. And of course, fewer turns would mean um, a considerably higher current would be required to create the same magnetic field, and of course, uh, cause the plunger inside to move and trip the device. Now, the other components in here are this uh, central section here, made out of uh, actual individual plates of uh, copper or some other metal material. And uh, the purpose of this is so that when the switch here opens, there's always going to be a spark or an arc between the two sides of the contact and the size of that depends on the load that's being switched. But bearing in mind if this was uh, disconnecting on a uh, short circuit fault, there's going to be a lot of energy involved here and the purpose of these is to dissipate the energy from that arc and of course prevent it from exploding and destroying the device. So uh, the bottom contact here is actually in this position there and as you see it extends all the way up here and it actually goes all the way up to the top on this side. And the other contact here has a corresponding piece of metal, and that's actually on this side here. And that actually goes underneath and behind here, and comes up the back here, and actually connects up to the top over here. And all of these plates, although they're metallic, they're not actually electrically connected together. So between the two sides of the contact, as it were, which are simply extended from here and here, you've got a number of these individual metal plates. So if the arc starts here, the shape of these will cause the arc to travel along these two pieces of metal, thereby making it considerably wider. That in itself is obviously likely to cause it to break. And uh, if it hasn't broken by that time, when it gets to these metal plates, these will actually serve to divide the arc into a number of very small little sections, each one of which, of course, is not going to be capable of sustaining any kind of arc for any length of time, and so it will be extinguished. And the fact that these are made obviously of metal, it will absorb a fair amount of the energy as heat from the arc and again help to uh, dissipate that completely. And so on the top here we've just got this uh, material which simply holds the various plates together and uh, the whole thing is uh, not actually uh, fixed in there, it's purely a uh, sort 
sort of a pressed fit and we can just sort of ease it out of there. As you can see, all the plates are essentially separated. See through the bottom there. And just held in position by these uh, pieces of insulating material on either side. And there you can see but more clearly the uh, extension of the bottom contact. Which of course comes along uh, again right up to the top. And on this side, this is the other side of the contact. But again, it's this which is also connected to that side. And again, that goes all the way to the top there. And this actually extends underneath the uh, trip mechanism here. As you see that actually goes up behind here and then again connects into the top over there. There's actually an insulating uh, sheet there which has uh, fell out uh, a moment ago but uh, although that's connected there there's no actual uh, connection between the two sides as all of these plates are of course totally separate and their whole purpose there is to uh, say break the arc into a number of very small arcs and therefore dissipate it and prevent it from destroying the device. And the other thing to note here is they've got this piece of material here which is actually a white ceramic and that's to prevent the uh, arc from melting a hole in the side of the plastic casing. And there's actually another piece which goes over the top obviously that fits into the other side of the uh, case there. So any arc that's in here will be contained on both sides by this hard ceramic and again by the metal on the uh, bottom here and of course on the top by the uh, individual metal plates above which of course absorb and dissipate the energy. So that's what's inside a fairly typical uh, circuit breaker and as you can see there is actually quite a lot of stuff in there so uh, hence they're uh, surprisingly cheap for what they actually are. Now some of these have been made as uh, counterfeit products of course by uh, certain uh, illegal factories and uh, typically these don't have any of this stuff inside at all they just simply have the terminals and a bit of wire linking the two together. Of course such a device would be extremely dangerous because of course it wouldn't switch off in the event of any kind of fault but uh, Nevertheless, uh, those things have been seen, and uh, generally you can tell because when you pick them up, there's no weight inside at all, and of course all of this uh, metal here weighs uh, a certain amount. But uh, of course that's easily avoided by uh, buying these from a reputable supplier, not eBay or some other dubious source. Now this was one of the ones which actually stopped working in the installation, so uh, let's have a quick look inside, but it doesn't actually look particularly damaged at all. So and assume that a bit of corrosion must have sort of built up on the contact here and then of course when the uh, thing was closed it wasn't actually making a uh, proper connection here anymore. As I say at the time the uh, owners of the property uh, complained because of course the uh, lights were not working so and regardless of the position of the switch it still uh, wouldn't actually turn on so uh, I presume it was some corrosion here though this does seem to have continuity through it now so not entirely uh, conclusive as to what the problem there was. Now most circuit breakers now incorporate both of the uh, tripping mechanisms, both the uh, magnetic part and the uh, thermal part. And the reason for having those two is that they can both relax to different types of fault situation. If you've got a short circuit or a, a substantial overload then the magnetic part is the one that will normally trip and that will go pretty much instantaneously once the current reaches whatever the predefined limit is. However for uh, more smaller types of overload, so for example on this 6 amp one if you sort of plugged in say, a 10 amp device it's fairly unlikely that the uh, magnetic part will trip there and of course if it had been designed to do that it would be a rather tiresome device because it would be very easy to trip it all the time just by turning on certain pieces of equipment. So the uh, thermal part comes into play there as uh, that strip then will uh, slowly heat up and trip and of course because it has to actually heat up physically and bend away it doesn't trip straight away, it could be many seconds or in some cases even several minutes before the uh, strip heated up enough to trip the device. So although this is a 6 amp device, if you say you connected it to a 7 amp circuit nothing would actually happen, it would actually pass 7 amps pretty much indefinitely because although the strip would heat it wouldn't actually heat up enough to bend away and of course with conversely larger currents flowing through there the time for it to heat and bend obviously reduces away until uh, eventually you're tripping it uh, within just a few seconds. So important to note there that the magnetic part will trip pretty much instantly but the thermal part can take a considerable amount of time anything from say seconds to even minutes in some cases. Now in terms of the uh, types of circuit breakers uh, the ones we had there were B type ones and you see the letter B was uh, placed in front of the rating so B40 or B6 in the case of those examples. So uh, the type B circuit breaker is by far the most common and the letter B indicates that the tripping current uh, required to essentially trip the device instantaneously or as near to that as possible is between three times and five times 
the rating of the device. So in the case of a 6 amp circuit breaker, or a B6, the uh, tripping current required would be between 18 and 30 amps. The other types are a type C, which is between 5 times and 10 times the current, and a type D, which is 10 times to 20 times. And again, in the case of the uh, 6 amp circuit breaker, that means the current required to trip the device would be somewhere between 30 and 60 amps, or the case of the type D would be between 60 and 120 amps. So why have these things at all? Well, the uh, point is that you wouldn't want a Type B to trip instantly, say, at its exact rating of 6 amps, because depending on what you're actually connecting to it, there's always going to be some kind of surge when you initially turn on the device. Even if you look at a simple uh, filament lamp, for example, although it might only be, uh, say, sub 1 amp current flowing through there, when you switch it on, the filament is actually very cold, and its resistance is considerably less than it would be when it's at operating temperature. So there's always a bit of a surge that goes through for just a fraction of a second. So a circuit breaker that tripped at the exact current specified would really be a bit of a bother. It would be tripping off pretty much every time you turned on any device anywhere in your house. Now, typical devices where you would use the other ratings would be highly inductive items, such as motors. And a typical motor, for example, might have a surge of, say, between five and eight times the actual running current. So if you had a motor which used six amps all the time, switching it on might, say, have a surge of, say, eight times that. So a Type B circuit breaker is probably going to trip uh, pretty much all the time, so you'd never actually get the motor switched on. So in that case, you would use a Type C, which uh, has the higher tripping current there, so that the initial surge wouldn't actually cause it to switch off instantly. And again, Type D is a similar situation. It's just for devices where the initial switch on surge of current is likely to trip one of the lower rated devices. Type D is not particularly common, but certainly some large motors could use them or other sort of typical applications might be sort of large transformers or x-ray machines or that type of equipment. Not something you're going to use that often, but uh, again, it all depends on the specifications of the actual device. And of course, you can get those from the manufacturer of the equipment. So a look there at circuit breakers, uh, devices which uh, disconnect the supply in the event of an overload or a short circuit. And uh, just to reiterate there that the uh, different types, the B, C and D, with the 5, 10 or 20 times uh, the rated current, that only refers to the magnetic component of the circuit breaker, not the thermal one. The thermal element is actually the same in all three types. And that's all for this particular video. And uh, in the next video, we'll actually look at uh, the uh, thermal part in more detail and also in terms of selecting cables as appropriate to each device. So until next time, thanks for watching.